Hi all, um, SV Tapatia, sailing vessel Tapatia. This is uh, basically the record of the build of this boat. And we're sat here on the aft deck, which you know all about because you watched last week's video. Um, and I thought I'd start off this week with a few words on thoughts on boat plans. Um, sort of inspired by a few comments I've had, I guess, over, over the, the months, years, whatever it is. Boat plans. Um, my feeling is that it's, if you're going to take on a project such as this, you're building yourself a cruising sailboat that you want to go out and, and explore with or at least mess around with in the water. If you're not a naval architect yourself, you probably need some, some input from somebody who is a naval architect. You, know, you could sit down and draw a boat and build it yourself, no doubt, and, and people have, but if you haven't got the, the experience of building boats and designing boats, I think it's probably wise to, to trust a naval architect, buy some plans buy the plans because you're sort of respecting that naval architect's work and you're giving them a bit of a bit of commission for their efforts aren't you and you're buying plans of a, of a of a boat that you believe will function the architects designed it they've hopefully done some testing of some sort and, and you've got a boat design that will work as a boat okay having said that boat plans once you've got them are basically guidelines they're not laws they're guidelines and from there you're you're free to change whatever you feel is sensible on those plans i believe and others do too uh, for example the benford dory that we're building here i know other builders have for example stretched the dimensions by by a certain percentage uh, another builder i know put a put a transom on uh, the boat that was designed to be a double ender so you know there are various things i think several builders have changed the, the, the dimensions of them um, i can think of one who said he bought the plans for the 32 and stretched it by 10 percent you know you, you're free those are pretty major changes and beyond that the details of the build you can change however you think is sensible really so, so the plans are guidelines. For me, I've stuck to the dimensions from Jay Benford. So for me, the, the table of offsets is the most important thing. I'm sure for most people, the table of offsets is the most important thing in the plans. And that's really all you need. If you've got the table of offsets, you could build any boat. Um, Cause that gives you the dimensions for, for drawing up the lofting lines for the lines of your boat. Um, but beyond that, as I say, the rest of it's guidelines and you can change anything you like um, to whatever you think is going to work for you. So this week, what's been going on? Well, first thing, well, we've done a few different bits around and about. So there's not been one main working area this week, but we needed to get some more black locusts. So Kerry and I took a run off to the local wood yard. I, I phoned them a while back and, and they told me they got a whole new load of black locusts um, in. So that was kind of exciting. So we went, took a run off to the wood yard and got ourselves a rather large piece, just the one, um, and brought it back. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's good. It's perfect. Yeah. You can't see the trailer on the back.
Yeah, then we milled a bit of that black locust. Uh, Kerry gave me a hand on that one and uh, started thinking about a couple of hatch areas. One, the lazarette hatch, the framing around the lazarette hatch. Started just thinking about that. And then the turtle for the, for the sliding hatch behind me. Just made a start on that. Um, and uh, that's in progress now.
I think I'll say a few words about this, this hatch or the glazing of it. Um, last week you saw me unpack these pieces of acrylic. A um, couple of quick words. 10 millimeter thick cast acrylic. Now there's, there are a few thoughts on what's the best glazing to use, plastic glazing or polymer glazing to use, but I think the general consensus is that cast acrylic is, is favorite. Cast acrylic, as opposed to extruded acrylic because um, cast acrylic doesn't have the stresses in it that acrylic extrusion has. So um, it's less likely to crack or glaze or whatever. Uh, so that's what I've gone for, 10 millimeter thick cast acrylic. Um, and at the moment you'll see as I've just lifted it out, haven't I? But it's, you see it's only laid there. And that's because I'm waiting for the sealant to come. I've ordered some sealant and it's on its way, but it's not here yet. Um, and the reason for that is, is that you need a decent special glazing sealant for, for this application. Again, if you use the wrong sealant, you, you could crack your acrylic because it, it has quite a, a high coefficient of expansion. Um, so I've ordered it, as I say, glazing a, a sealant for this. There are a couple of options that people recommend. There's a Sika Flex product, product, Sika product. There's a Dow Corning product that we don't seem to be able to get here. And uh, I've ordered some stuff, I think it's called CT1 I've ordered. I'll show you it when it gets here and I'll show you fitting these in. But that's why we're waiting on the hatch at the moment. Sealant's on its way. Should be here in a week or so, I hope. And we'll be getting on finishing off this hatch construction.
If you'd start at that end of it first of all, please. Well, I guess that's about it for this week. So thanks for watching. Um, you know, thumbs ups are always appreciated. Leave a comment if you've got a thought or um, if you really like what we do, you can consider giving us a bit of support on the Patreon. There's a link just coming up. See you next time. Bye.